we didn't have any in the southwest. Neither did we have any in the southeast. The problem in the south-south in the Niger Delta had been largely resolved by the PDP government of President Yaradua. Recall also that before the elections, there was also, because the major area of problems was basically the Northeast, and basically in two states, maybe just in another one, uh, Borno, Yobe, and part of Adamawa, if we all tell ourselves the truth. And the government at that time, or President Jonathan, also asked for time so that they can be sure that elections are done peacefully everywhere. And there was a sweep that brought this, all these uh, dangerous people were actually sent out of Nigeria. The point really, like I told you, is that when people develop selective amnesia in this government, that is their issue, not ours. At the point at which we handed over in 2015, most parts of Bono State had been cleared uh, and people had been told to move back. With some, it's then, a local government or so. They still have a no, senator. Yes, at that time, they, they no, hosting, no, 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 they, it wasn't hosting of flags. That is what I'm saying. They had already removed all of them. Then, this government came into place. That I'm talking about selective amnesia. This government spent six, how many months, to even get a government going. Those who were fighting the wars, including those who were brought from outside at that time, who had even uh, decimated the... We were all sent away. And then gradually, the same Boko Haram people started creeping back. And I said that from that time, that was when we now started getting people coming into this country. And this same apologies of our government making excuses for them. Understand that at that time when we queried, and that's why I like the fact that there's always the facts. There's always the intent doesn't lie. At that time, I remember in 2016 and 2017, when we queried, and said, who are all these people who are not speaking Nigerian languages, who are coming in carrying this thing? What happened? We were told, First of all, by President Buhari himself, that it was a fallout of the civil war in Libya. When we queried further to say, why are these people in Plato and in Benue killing and murdering uh, uh, villagers and sacking villages? We were told that, oh, that it was uh, because people were on grazing routes and were blocking those because of, uh, I mean, remember, the, the minister of defense at that time, Dan Mansu, made that statement. And when we went further to ask again, how could it be that people have been murdered all over the place? And you're telling us that it is just header farmer clash. At every point, there will always be a narrative. At that time, did you hear of anything in uh, South Kaduna? Did you hear of anything in Katsina? Did you hear of anything in Zamfara? Did you hear of anything in Kebi? Nothing. A safe country was handed over to APC. And in the past six years of APC, all this, this safe country has now turned into a killing field for Nigerians everywhere. We can argue endlessly about it, but the facts cannot be controverted.
Yes. What do you see as a possible solution? If, for example, you are given the opportunity to turn this around and fix the security situation in the country, what would you do? The first thing is that I get those who know what to do, to do the work. I don't now introduce nepotism into the, uh, the security architecture. Understand this, show. And I would like Nigerians to uh, controvert me on this, if I'm lying. I remember that when the appointments were being made in the security agent, and, and we said, no, something is wrong here. How could we just continue to put just a particular set of people from a particular side of the country, from a particular religion, that this is a secular country and multi uh, ethnic country. One of the very key phrases that was always used at that time was, oh, leave the president to make his appointment for those that he trusts. We don't care whether they come from one kitchen, so long as he trusts those. And we said no. Certain things you have to do on competence. So if I need to do a surgery in my eye, I'm not going to go and find a native doctor to come and do it. I will find a trained ophthalmologist. And that is how it is with most parts of life. You don't just put people just because you like them or they are from your house or something like that and say go and do a job that is beyond their capacity. So what we are seeing is the consequence of what a friend of mine called the weaponization of nepotism. When you leave those who are competent to do a job, and then you give it to some other people, and justify it in all manners of ways, because you can justify anything on this earth, because the consequence will always be that we, will suffer for it. And Nigeria is, I'm sorry, in very dire straits today because of this type of judgment. So you, you will get, you go after people, even if they're mercenaries or non-Nigerians. Who will do the job is the most important thing. Not minding whether they are let, not Nigerians. Or... No, let, let me say this. Because show, the show, government of PDP show, made let, use let, of let, mercenaries. Let this, Would you use that? Would you consider such? It got the job done then, didn't it? We got the job done. We could not do election. And that election was what the, the election that brought in President Buhari. We got the job done done. That is the most critical thing. Uh, the, the most critical thing today, look, one of the things that pains me personally, and I've had discussions with uh, friends of mine who are in the military, and every time I say this, the Nigerian military went to Congo, imposed order in Congo in the 60s. The Nigerian military in the 80s went to Liberia, went to Syria law, imposed order, which means that the problem today is not the, the Nigerian military has the capacity, and I continue to say they do. But somebody on Channel's television, too, gave us a hint of the, what the problem was, which is that a, the military has to work under the leadership of the um, civil authority. And when the civil authority doesn't give them that go ahead to be able to deal with that issue, we all run into problems. I, I think that if it's in terms of funding, 
when somebody now tells you, oh, they, they, they stole money, it's not true. You mean it's they were, not, monies you know, were not stolen? I said, meant for... I said that it is not, that is not the reason why we are unable, because we also found out that whatever little success that was done at the early part of this administration, it was the arms and ammunition that was bought by the uh, uh, PDP government. Are you saying that monies were not being carted away from the no, NSC's I, office? Not, I, that were, there were, these were allegations made and they were taken to court that the, there were monies that were being given by people and some people owned up to it that they actually took to uh, show monies. You know what goes on and I think I, I don't want you also to fall into that trap. The trap is under Jonathan, we voted $2 billion. I was part of the Senate that done that. And they bought equipment for this. If a few people, uh, their fingers were found in a uh, few fries, is that what you will say that the whole money was stolen? It wasn't. A lot of money was stolen. Well, Millions let, let, in see, dollars that is the were problem. alleged. That, 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 that is the problem with this narrative. Sheer incompetence is now being subsumed under a phantom people stole money. And I say it is sheer incompetence. Are you saying monies were not stolen? No, Sean, you are misunderstanding me. I'm not saying monies were or were not stolen. I'm saying that it is the incompetence of the leadership and the, uh, uh, the direction of the fight against uh, the uh, insecurity and uh, the terrorists and everything that have besieged Nigeria, that rather than oh no, people now start looking for where to hang, and, and then the first thing to do is oh, PDP people stole. Please show um, the day we are going to have. A conversation. The day we're going to have a conversation on the amount stolen in this government, I'm sure Nigerians will be. They will. They will. They will shudder. You. You have evidence that money is being stolen in this government. So I say, when that conversation will come, usually conversations come when a government leaves power. Because people, whistleblowers, all manners of people who could talk, will find it very difficult to do so while they are still the perpetrators inside that government. So I don't want us to cover the failings of those who have the critical responsibility of our security on saying PDP did what? Let's put it this way. So, six years, assuming anything went wrong before six, six years, things have progressively gotten worse. How can you now turn around and blame it on what happened six years ago. The reason why you came into power, you told us, was I'm a general. I have the wherewithal. I know the way to tackle this problem. And Nigerians say, fine, this is our biggest problem. Let's, let's give you that opportunity. And since that opportunity had been given till today, what have we had? It has been one excuse after another. But I think there was a famous United States president, I think Harry Truman, who says, the book stops on my table. We now have a president that every effort is made 
to say that the buck doesn't stop on his table. And we say, no. The reason why you are elected with your government and given the full reins of power is that everybody expected improvement. We didn't expect that it will get worse. Let me take you to the southeast uh, where you're representing your people from an uh, Abbey estate. Yeah. And there is also a share of some of these elements of insecurity. But let me ask first and foremost, are you a supporter of IPOB? <laughs> I'm a supporter of the cries of our people against injustice, against injustice. Uh, Last, I think it was on, on Friday, show, I was chairman of a book launch, Children of Biafra. It was a book, or it's a book, about the Biafran war, seen through the eyes of a child. So several people wrote their childhood experiences. Very, very poignant book that everybody needs to read. Because children don't cause wars. It's us elites going around trying to. Uh, and in my statement, because I was chairman of that book launch, I said that a short while ago, former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, made a statement, whether jokingly or not. And that statement was that the actions and the, um, the policies of this government, present government, is turning everybody into a Biafra. So, and um, I, I just looked at that statement. And what, what did he mean by that statement? He just said, Everybody complaining about injustice, everybody complaining about marginalization, everybody complaining about the rampant nepotism, everybody complaining. So, so I stand with my people. Even if it is IPOP. You, you, you said you stand against but injustice. Against injustice. But with even my if it's people. IPOP or anything. There are several groups. So one of the biggest I'd say problems that the media also has is that they tag everything hype up. In the Southeast, you won't believe it that there are more than 30 different separatist organizations. Hype up, mass up, and there are so many. Which of and them? Each one of them comes back to the same thing. But I have also said to myself. Civil War ended in 1970. By 1979, by 1979, somebody from that enclave, from the same place, from the southeast, Dr. Alessi Kwemo, blessed memory, was a vice president of this country, which showed that there were people who were able to manage the diversity of Nigeria. Why you're having separatist uh, agitations everywhere today in the West, in the South, in the South, South, and all that, is that some people are unable to manage our diversity. That is just the fact. I mean, Senator, yes. you've not told us whether or not you psychologically or physically or intuitively support IPOP. Why do you want to know whether I support IPOP? Okay. I want to know. I want uh, to know because, whether because, because you ideologically because also... It looks to you, it no, looks no, no, no. I'm asking because you've not answered it. That's so why I'm that, bringing uh, it back uh, again. Let, let me also say so this. So if, if it you, looks to me like you want to put everybody in one bracket. This one is an iPod band. No, no, this just, one is a Masonian. No, no, I'm just asking a question, <laughs> Senator. <laughs> no, that's what it, you're doing. No, 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 I'm just asking that's a question. Doing. If you do, maybe I, ideologically you support... I have, I have asked you, I have said... There is nobody from the Southeast that I know 
who does not feel that the way that people from the South is that treated today? That's why I, I brought back what happened you know, after the, immediately after the Civil War. Treated today, do not feel that there is something fundamentally wrong, which should be resolved. And un, un, unless it's resolved, you will always have okay. this. When we get to that issue, do you regret standing surety for an Namdekano? Not at all. I've even said in another interview, I think it was on TV, mm -hmm. see that if the second thing had the same thing today, we still sound shorty. Because, because, show what was the problem? What exactly was the problem? You feel that you're being unfairly treated. And at every point that you try to make and say, why don't we talk about it? You are being blocked at all points. And then, of course, if you're a youth, you erupt. That's what normally happens. What happens is that you come in and do a this, uh, uh, dialogue with people. President Yeradoa, at the point at which the Niger Delta was burning, the oil pipelines were being broken, and oil production had fallen to an all-time low. Didn't go in with guns. Didn't go in to say, let us kill everybody, let us jail everybody. He opted to say, come and tell us what the problem was. And that largely resolved the issue up to today. So why is it? that the government of APC today has an aversion to dialogue. Why? What is it that makes any time that the Southeast is mentioned, hackles are raised? What is it about this particular government? And, and that's why I went back to say there had been other governments, including Fulani government. So what is it about something? So today? let me ask you, Senator, mm. what, because people generally speak about the egos being marginalized, but that is a very general term to describe the agitation on the minds of those who say egos are being marginalized. What is this marginalization in specific term? I ask another question, Sean. If you say, sit down and write out um, what it means. Sit down and write out what this is. Of course, if I write, uh, you will see it from an elitist point of view. Okay, so they didn't give you A or B or C and say, why not? No, that's not the thing. There is a general lack of empathy about the sufferings of people. There is a general... Uh, I would say um, closure of the space for business and every other way that people see when they live in a country. At the point at which even as at today, there are more police checkpoints in the southeast than in the northeast, where the uh, problems are, than in the northwest. You will never believe it. You go from one city to the other, from, from uh, Onecha to Were, oh, several, you will see up to 10, 20 checkpoints. Why? Why are our people? being subjected to the fact that children growing up at school age, one will have to score 300, another one will score two in order to be able to go to the same school. Why? 
why would the local importer who needs to bring his goods and able to raise his money and do his business, all the ports in the um, in the eastern coast, starting from Ware, Koko, Potakot, uh, One, Calabar, and all that, be non-viable. And so, and the insurance rates are higher. The cost of bringing it is higher. So you have to move through Lagos. So somebody who now needs to do his business has to move it by land, costing so much. Why is it shown that there is a master plan for railways and efforts and monies are borrowed to do standard gauge lines on the Western Corridor? And then you're told that on the Eastern Corridor, which starts from Potakot and goes all the way to Maidugri, because it goes through the heartland of the south. It just said, oh no, what we're just going to do is to rehabilitate the old one. Forgetting that in the same uh, in the same uh, uh, railway master plan, they are supposed to meet somewhere. So how would a narrow gauge intersect with a standard gauge, assuming that you want both of them to meet somewhere so you can move out goods and so forth. Why? And when questions are asked, you are now seen as a troublemaker when you ask those questions. And, and then we turn around and say, but OK, I, 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 and, and elements of this government are, are very, very quick, very quick to run to a default position. So we know the default position. Oh, PDP, well, they were thieves. Yeah, and so that is why. How? See, you, I mean, is you, well, and then they say, oh, but you were in power. Why didn't you do it? No. Government is supposed to be a continuum. So I do my good, you come in, you improve it. Another one comes in, he improves on that. But you take a position that is not so good, and we now say, no, 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 no. There's something that we need to correct here. And then you fall back as if it's written. OK, anytime you ask a question, go back to all of you are thieves. You know? you know, I'm in the National Assembly here. I suffer part of it. And uh, I go out, and uh, people say, ah, but you people, you're all thieves. What do you do? Would <laughs> an Igbo president resolve this matter? in 2023. Let me put it this way, Shun. The man who the shoe pinches now knows where it hurts. The Igbo are the people in Nigeria who make the conscious effort of leaving their homeland to settle anywhere else without hurting their hopes. At any point where they go to stay with their hopes, you have never heard that they kill and maim and burn and all that. So they know how to aggregate everybody's um, you know, feelings, their customs, their laws, their morals, they are everything. And so because of that, we feel that Debo will understand you, will even have the time for you. Today, 
We don't feel that this government has the time for anybody. I'm no longer talking Igbo now. <laughs> I'm talking about the whole of Nigeria. They only talk to themselves and only listen to themselves. So you, if an Igbo man becomes a president in 2023, you don't think that you, will resolve the matter? You will see a tremendous change starting with the fact that he will be able or she will be able to manage our diversity better. So invariably, there needs to be an Igbo president in 2023. Um, you're putting words in my mouth. I mean, I I'm just asking. Invariably. No, no, I'm just asking. Uh, do you think know, that uh, an Igbo uh, presidency uh, is right in 2023? It's right in 2023. Number one, uh, number two, we think that the party called APC is not set up to manage Nigeria properly. And so it has to be our own party that has been able to carry everybody along. And those of us Igbos within our party, knowing that you have to play politics, you have to talk to people, you have to be able to um, let people see your own point of view and buy into your vision, are doing the consultations now. And you think PDP is making that concentration? Because yes. what we are understanding is that PDP has ceded the presidential slot to the north in 2023? I do not think so. I've been part of all the negotiations and the talks going, and I have never seen where there was any such seeding. Should I that happen? So. Should that happen? How would that sit with you? If my party will make a decision. Then it is at that time that I will make my own um, feelings known. Not to preempt, you know, because when, when one of the biggest problems we do is that we try to shape our narrative as if we are giving ultimatum. Because when it should that happen, then this happens. That, that's giving an ultimatum. So let, that, that, that's not how let, to do a negotiation. Your name had come up in conversations as a possible candidate for your party in 2023. Should that lot fall on you? What would you do? I would if it falls on me. Within six months, all these things would be a thing of the past. Have you ever considered being the president of Nigeria? <laughs> it's, it's uh, I will say this. If you ask uh, governor, former governor Muazu of uh, Bauchi State, we had a conversation of this nature in the year 2000. And he asked me what was it? Wouldn't you like to be president of Nigeria? And I said, of course, who would not like to head this beautiful country? And that was far back as uh, 2000. But, Is your answer uh, still the same? Let, let's put it this way. Chung. My good friend and brother, Peter Obi, said something when this type of questions came out and says, if you have a vehicle with a knocked engine, who would you look for? Will you look for a very good driver for a vehicle without with that, that the engine will not move? What you should do first is to go look for a mechanic. Is that not so? A, a good mechanic to make sure that the engine can run. Oh, I think we are at the point today in Nigeria where we need that type of mechanic. 
and it could have been me. <laughs> could be. I'm, I'm sure Nigerians will be able to make up their mind who it can be. Oh, do you think you are the kind of mechanic in court <laughs> that Nigeria needs? Why not? The people who are there today, so I don't think that they are much better than me. Do you think they are? You think you can do a better job? <laughs> I think I can do a more fantastic job than what I'm seeing. Do you support the sit-at-home order? I think the sit-at-home order was eventually uh, renounced, I think, uh, because we also heard that uh, the IPOP said no more um, let the sit at home be only when their leader comes to court. But we find that subsequent to that time, uh, after that time, that people still sit. Uh, generally, there's a, a form of compliance. For it should worry the government. If a non-state actor is complied with in this manner, it takes us back to what I said at the beginning, that there is need to sit and talk with these people, not to at all times demonize and try to wave them off of people you can crush by kinetic means. Because the point is this. If you are a discerning person, you should ask yourself, why? Why do people steal despite all the assurances, despite the fact that they are losing, are willing to make that sacrifice. In other words, you can crush people physically, but you cannot crush an idea. And so you need to be able to engage so that that idea is what the discussion all. Would you be willing to meet wife if such a window opens? I know, as a matter of fact, that efforts have been made by well-meaning Nigerians to this government for such discussions to happen. But it has always been rebuffed. This government needs to dialogue with everybody. I'm not just talking about the IPOP people. Like I told you, there are so many organizations. This government needs to dialogue with the Yoruba separatists. This government needs to continue dialoguing with the Niger Delta people. This government needs to talk and dialogue with the people from the Middle Belt, the people from Plateau, the people from Southern Kaduna. You must have to continue to talk to all these people. Because there is something going on. And what is going on is that our people are being killed, massacred, robbed, and all. It, we just seem to sit and not bother on the massive mayhem going on in the country. We just seem to, oh, let us just continue. Let's do an election. And people are dying every day. On a final note, let's wrap up now. An incident happened in the National Assembly, in the Senate, where you called for a vote on the PIB and on the Electoral Amendment, specifically on the Electoral Act Amendment. But the way it panned out, are you happy with the PIB, for example, the way it was passed? I'm very, very unhappy. I'm not happy at all the way it panned out. And I will tell you why. For everything that you bring out to the floor, we normally go, we normally meet, 
we now we normally after reach certain consensus when we reach that consensus what now happens is that we say okay well, when we bring it to the floor we vote on it and we are happy everybody goes home that we're able to achieve something. But on the PIB, we reached an agreement, which was, which was that the host communities were going to get 5%. That agreement was breached on the floor by the same people from the majority party, who were party to the agreement. And so when it was now time to vote, on that particular section of the host community um, fund of 5%, a member of APC stood up and said, oh, that is now proposing 3%. And then the people from the APC all told because it was seen as the party line. Now, if you also recall, if you watched that day, that was the first time we would have had division on the floor. In fact, a member of uh, the uh, committee to that actually read that, uh, Senator Sekibo from Rivers had called for a division. Then they persuaded him, and we said, "Okay, let's not, let's not let, let this matter linger. Maybe later we can do an amendment." And we said, "Okay, fine." Then we came to the point of the electoral act. We agreed because. Prior to the, fact, to the time that that act, uh, that, that um, uh, uh, sorry, the bill, because it's still a bill, hasn't been signed. Prior to the time that bill was brought, there had been meetings, INEC was consulted, all the different stakeholders were consulted, and they came up with a particular agreement on that section 52 about transmission of results. And the wording there was that it would now be left to INEC. So the wording was no longer a shall, but will be a may. And we all were happy with that resolution because there were very strong opposition or opinions on all sides. And it's okay. INEC is the body that is under the Constitution, legally mandated to conduct elections, and therefore, let them make that decision. Senate Minority Leader, Senator Ayin Ayabaribe, such a pleasure talking to you. My, my pleasure. My Sincerely pleasure. appreciate it. Thank you so much. At any other time.